All right, welcome everyone. Hello and welcome to another episode of Working in Photoshop with Terry White Live. We're calling it something different every single time. Welcome, welcome, welcome back everyone. Uh, if this is your first time to the stream or if you're watching the replay, thanks for watching the replay. Thanks for joining us today live. Uh, today I'm going to take a look at um, some editing techniques inside of both Lightroom and Photoshop. Um, for travel. So for travel photos, since I know many of you will be traveling this summer and you'll be taking great pictures and you'll probably want to make those great pictures even better. Um, so pain tab, hello all the way from St. Vincent. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. And we're going to get started in just a second here. I just want to make sure everything else is up and running. It looks like we are. Got my chat window. Hey, Victoria. And we are good to go. So there'll be more of you coming in um, as, I, as I talk, but I'm not going to hold the people up that were on time. So we will go ahead and jump in and get started right now. All right, so I'm going to switch over to my computer. And before I do that, actually, I do want to explain one thing. I will be working, uh, like I said, between Lightroom and Photoshop. What I realized, though, is that there's two versions of Lightroom. There's the new Lightroom CC, which is cloud-based, meaning from the standpoint of backing up your photos and syncing. And then, there, of course, there's the traditional Lightroom that we know and love for years and years, and that's Lightroom Classic CC. Now, I'm going to do some things in each one just to show that you can do them in each one. Um, some things I'm going to do in Lightroom Classic can't be done in Lightroom CC, so I'll talk about those as well. And uh, the things that I do in Lightroom CC can be done in Lightroom Classic. So if I'm doing it in Lightroom CC, know that it can be done in either Lightroom CC or Lightroom Classic. If I'm doing it in Lightroom Classic, depending on what it is, it can be done in Lightroom Classic or maybe in Lightroom CC. It depends on what it is. Uh, so uh, Kalpana, or Kalpana, welcome, 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 uh, and hello. So let's go ahead and switch over to my computer so you guys can see what I'm doing. And so that I don't forget to switch, I'm starting out in Lightroom CC. So this is Lightroom CC, the brand new Lightroom um, for uh, across multiple devices. So this was Lightroom CC on the desktop. Of course, there's Lightroom CC for iOS, Lightroom CC for Android, Lightroom CC for the web. Um, so it doesn't matter which one you're working on, you'll sync and work with the same native files, the same raw files, the same JPEGs. Uh, those are synced and backed up. So you have full access to your full resolution uh, no matter what device you're on. So that's one of the benefits of working inside of Lightroom CC. All right, so I got this uh, first photo selected here. I'm going to hit the letter D to work on it in detail, or if you were in Classic, that would be the develop mode. Uh, Alexandre, hello and welcome. And this is a typical travel scene where you take a picture of the, the skyline or you take a picture of a tall skyscraper or a monument. And uh, depend, no, no matter what you do, you're going to run into this situation at some point, most likely more often than not, where the buildings just kind of look like they're leaning over. They don't look straight. And that's because just the way optics work on cameras, you're shooting down from the ground, you're shooting up, things will tend to lean in towards the center. And that's just the way it works. But that doesn't mean you have to live with it. That doesn't mean you have, to, you have to present your photos that way. So these are some basic things you can do, some simple, quick tricks you can do just to make your travel photos look that much better. So for example, I'll head over to my, um, my developed controls and I've got my profile, which is brand new. Uh, if this were a raw file, I'd be able to switch between the various raw format or raw profiles, I should say. Uh, or, of course, I can browse and get to the creative one. So this is a brand new feature working with profiles in both Lightroom CC, Lightroom Classic, and, of course, Adobe Camera Raw. I'm going to pop down to two things. I'm going to work with optics first and then geometry. When I go to optics, one of the first things I like to do with any photo, travel, landscape, portraits, whatever it is, is now that Lightroom can remove lens distortion, um, why not? In other words, I, I tend to want my lens distortion removed, especially when I'm working with people because I don't want their faces distorted, like with a wide angle lens or a lens that isn't flattering necessarily to people, but you need it to capture the whole scene. So I will enable the lens profile correction. If there was a lens, if there wasn't a 
uh, camera profile detect it, it would automatically pick it. Uh, this one looks in pretty good shape, but if I wanted to manually pick it, I could. If I knew exactly what camera I shot this with, for example, maybe this was a Nikon, um, maybe this was a probably more on the side of that lens. If I were to click OK, then it, as you can see, it started to make that correction. So that was before the correction, that was after the correction. So just, just getting the shot in a better shape. Now, in most cases, it will detect automatically what camera and lens, especially if it's a newer camera and a newer lens and it was coming right out of the camera as a JPEG or RAW file. All right, so that, that takes care of just that bending and bowing and vignetting around the edges of the photo that are introduced sometimes by the lens. But that doesn't fix my original problem, which is the building looks like it's going to fall over. So let's go to geometry. And in geometry, I've got a couple of options. I've got, uh, well, I've got up, upright. I've got a few options for upright. Auto is probably the best, easiest place to start. In other words, let's see if it can fix it by itself. If it can, great. I'm done. I don't need to do anything else. And I click auto, and it does a very good job. But, and I would have lived with this, and I did live with this back in the day where all we had was auto. And of course, you could go in, you could try some of the other ones, level, uh, doesn't do much of a change, vertical, that kind of gets it straighter, but then I, I'd have to crop it a little bit differently. And of course, full, full looks pretty good. So auto isn't always the best choice, um, but it certainly gets me there. The only problem I'm having with this is the center building looks pretty good. The left building looks like it's leaning over still a little bit to the right. The left buildings look like they're still leaning over a little bit to the left. I'm sorry, the right buildings look like they're leaning to the left. The left building looks like it's leaning to the right. Still not perfect. So what I'm gonna do is switch it back off so you can see where we started. Because now I've got the new Guided Upright. And what's cool about Guided, and by the way, just as a side note, Guided has made its way onto the uh, mobile app, at least on the iOS side. I'm not sure if it's on Android yet. Uh, but you got Guided Upright even on your phone. So what you do is you, you have to pull out at least two guides. It will not work with just one. So I'm going to pull out the first guide. I'm going to say, this is what should be straight with this edge. And nothing happens because I only did one. So as I pull out the second one, it will start to make the adjustments in the photo. And again, that's gonna make me have to crop it, but that's okay, at least I get my building straight. And it looks pretty good. Now, you can still drag out a third or fourth guide if you need to, but this looks fairly good, fairly close right off the bat. Yeah, it doesn't need anything else. So now, at this point, I can either crop it, or I could, yeah, I can crop it, or I could um, check the box and do a constrained crop, and it'll do just that. I was going to say, I could, if, um, if in Lightroom Classic, for example, I've got controls where I could zoom it up, but it was, it's going to ultimately do the same thing. It's going to basically provide a crop. All right, so with that said, um, at this point, let me go into my color options here, go to my light settings. So now if you want to do anything else, uh, if you want to adjust your exposure, if you want to adjust your shadows, highlights, and contrast. If you wanted to auto-tone the photo, you could do those things now that you know that your buildings are in fact straight. And if I go back down to my geometry, there we go. So these are the sliders I was talking about where I had the ability uh, to scale it up instead of just cropping this. I just wanna make sure we had those options as well. Okay, so there we are. We have our guided upright. Um, we can toggle on and off the um, guided upright tool so we could see the, the um, guides that you pulled out. And again, that just is going to make that photo a much more compelling photo for showing off your, showing off your building, showing off those, those skyscrapers and towers and travel scenes. All right, so now let's jump back out. We've uh, got that one taken care of. Now let's go ahead and take care of There was one more here that I was going to do. Oh, actually, a couple more. Let's uh, take care of this one. That photo looks pretty trashed. It just looks like a cloudy, hazy, misty, foggy, low contrast kind of photo. And 
this is sometimes what you get out of the camera. And that, that's not the scene you remember. You remember those trees being a lot greener. You remember uh, the, the, the dirt in the tree um, branches being a little bit more contrasty and just better looking, more detailed. Well, we have a tool built in that will help you fix this. It's under Effects in Lightroom CC. It's in the basic panel now in Lightroom Classic, and it's called Dehaze. With Dehaze, I can just simply drag the slider over to the right and immediately take care of some of that haze issue. Still going to be in areas where it's okay for it to be. I don't mind it being up there, but I kind of want to bring out the detail down here. And if you did need to remove it from up there, you could always use a... Um, selective adjustment, like the graduated filter or, gra or gra graduated, um, the gra or linear gradient. <laughs> That's the name of it because sometimes it calls something different in the other app. So here I believe they refer to it as the linear gradient tool. And it's this one right here, the linear gradient or the letter L would let you pull down a linear gradient and apply the um, apply additional uh, dehaze to that area in the sky. So for example, if I still wanted to dehaze it, but just at the top, I could pull down the linear gradient. It's already got some dehaze being applied to it down here in the slider. I'm just going to pull that back a bit. And if I were to just go ahead and pull that down, it's you can see it start to dehaze as I pull that down, but now I can go in and control just that part of it and dehaze it even more. You get to a point of no return though. So that's like, there's not a whole lot more to pull back. So in that case, I don't want to wreck the photo. So I would either not dehaze it anymore or just pull back on the slider and, and only do a little bit. We also don't want to do any more saturation there. And everything else looks pretty good. Okay, so dehaze. And that uh, doesn't just work for landscapes. So if you had a person that you were traveling with or photographing, you have the uh, ability to, um, Siobhan, uh, welcome and hello and... Thank you for being Indian. <laughs> it says, I'm Indian. Uh, okay, so um, let's go ahead and go into that one. So let's go ahead and now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go ahead and do a dehaze. And we can just really bring in these, these travel photos. Photos that I otherwise would not have even used. I would have never shown that photo without all that haze in it. Matter of fact, when I took this photo back in the year I took it, I never did show this photo because of that haze issue. Now with dehaze, we can go back and even resurrect older travel photos or landscape photos and bring them back out. Okay, so that's uh, just a little bit of Lightroom CC. Let's do one more. Let's do this. Um, now we got an issue here and we can take care of this issue one of two ways. This is just, you know, you got that random person off to the side that leans into your long exposure shot. So I was doing a long exposure of this to kind of capture all this shadow detail. And of course, the, um, the uh, highlights at the top here. And that person, while my shutter was open, leaned in, took their shot, and of course, went back out. So one of the things I could do is I could crop that photo. Um, but in this case, it might be better if I were to remove that person. In other words, I don't want to crop that much of the photo off, which I could do. I could go to crop. I could... Um, it's already unlocked. So for example, I could just pull this in and I can say, you know what? Now that person's gone. But see, then I started to lose so much of that right side because I'm cropping in that far just to remove that person's hand. So if I really like this photo and I want to salvage it, what I want to do is get rid of that hand. Now, in, um, in Lightroom, you've got a spot removal tool slash um, healing brush but it was it's not as good as the one in Photoshop. It's okay for small stuff. Like, for example, if I want to just quickly get rid of a spot in the wall, works great. It, it picks another spot to replace it with. And it um, does a good job. And this was always intended for removing things like sensor dust or, you know, something on your lens. It really was never designed for removing something that big inside of a photo. So I could try it here because it's non-destructive, but if I don't like the results, then I'll undo it and take it over to Photoshop. So let's give it a shot. Uh, I may or may not like it. And the thing about it now is you don't have to make one giant circle. You can actually paint with it, which is kind of cool. So I'm just painting with it like any other brush and telling it to get, I could use a bigger brush, but it's too late now. I'm already in the midst of painting. 
Uh, but if I use a bigger brush, then I could have had a whole lot less strokes. And then I'll get all the way up here and fill it in. And now when I let go, it's going to pick a spot to, to heal from. So I'll let go. And at first glance, it's like it's okay. That looks pretty good. But then if I really look at the lines in the wall, they don't really match because notice how much higher the source is. So I can pick up the source and I can move it down. That starts to get me there. And that might be okay, but I can still see it a little bit around the edges. So if it were something smaller, Yes, you could probably get away with it with a spot removal tool or healing brush. If it's something big like this, then you probably want to do it in Photoshop where you get, you're going to get some better results or some potentially better results. So let me um, delete it. I just, because it's not instructive, I can just delete that adjustment. And now what I want to do is go up to my file menu, come down to edit in Photoshop, where it will uh, download the uh, resolution that I have of that particular photo and now open it up in Photoshop. So I'm here in Photoshop. I've got all my editing capabilities. I can duplicate the layer. I can do whatever I want. Uh, let's duplicate the layer just so we have a, a before and after to work with. And now I can go in, for example, and I can grab something like the patch tool. So instead of me using a spot healing brush, I can use a tool that um, Lightroom doesn't have. Lightroom doesn't have a patch tool. Now, because it's so close to that edge, there may be some blurring. So I'm going to try it with Content Aware first. If I don't like con if I don't like the results of Content Aware, then I'll try it without Content Aware. So this allows me to pull it over and get a preview of what I'm going to get as I drag it around. And then when I let go, it will actually uh, start to bring it in. Now, I like the right edge because it's clean. I don't like all the other edges, and this is what I feared because Content Aware is very exact. So it starts to bring in those textures exactly. So let's undo it. Undo it one more time. Let's switch it back to normal and see if I like normal. And again, we'll try and line it up as best we can. Now, it depends on which grooves I want to line this up to. I'll line it up to those. And that gives me a much cleaner result. Now. Everything doesn't line up just right, like especially right in here, but that's okay. If I want to kind of blend that edge in so it's not such a hard edge, I can do smaller patches to fix the things that I don't like. There we go. And I could keep working on it until I got it lined up and everything patched just the way I want it. Not the cleanest patch in the world, but we did have a big area to work with. Now, nothing's stopping you from using a clone stamp tool. If you think you would be better or more successful with that, it's going to probably take you a lot longer, but you might get a better result. I don't know if I'm making it better or worse now that I'm doing these little patches. I am not liking this at all. So I'll take a bigger area. Oh, well, that's, that is kind of the way the rocks look. So it's not so bad because they look, just, they, they're not perfectly lined up on the left side, which is the way the rocks really look. So maybe I'm making a bigger deal out of this than I need to. And also, um, and we're still there. So I would work on that a little bit better, uh, a little bit more, maybe clean this one more side up here. There we go. That's starting to come together now. It's starting to look better. And you know what? This is just bothering me to the point to where I can't let it go. Let's see if we can do that. Yeah, yeah, now it's starting to get there. So just a little bit of cleanup work. That last one wasn't so great. Until you remove any remnants that it looks like something used to be there, and then you should be good to go. Something like that. Okay, so now we save that. We close it. We switch back to Lightroom CC, and it will stack it. So we can see now we've got two. It'll stack it next to the original. So it's always going to keep the original. That's why you don't really have to duplicate the layer because you always have the original to go back to anyway. Um, but it's going to make your copy and therefore the one without the distracting hands. Now, you, now that you got the hand out of the way, 
you can go in and continue editing. Um, for example, you can you know choose profile. You can go to your lighting settings. You can try an auto tone. Uh, I'll bring down those highlights quite a bit, but I don't want to bring it down. Bring the rest of the photo down that much. Add a little bit more contrast. Bring the exposure back up just a bit. Even though it doesn't look like it has an immediate haze issue, dehazing a photo can just still bring out more contrast and more texture. And there we are. So before, after, with just a couple quick slides of the slider. Okay, so that's Lightroom CC. Let's pop over to uh, Lightroom Classic CC. Well, I've got some of the same photos. Uh, actually, I'm going to switch over to this collection, this album. I've got some of the same photos and some additional photos in this particular one. Now, in Lightroom Classic CC, I've got the ability not only to do the basic adjustments that we've been seeing, um, but I've also got, hey, Rose, I've also got the ability to um, do more, do more processing right in Lightroom. So I can process HDR images. I can process panoramas. Uh, I can process additional images to give me the look that I'm looking for. So let me get rid of a couple of these examples here. All right, so for example, let's start with a panorama. This was literally taken. Uh, I stood on top of this castle and just went click, 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 click all the way across until I got this scene. So just imagine turning, nope, oh, one too many, one, two, Three, doing some overlap, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and that was it. Okay, so I'm going to take those eight or nine photos, select them all. Uh, how many is it? Ten, ten photos. Select them all, and then I'm going to right-click on any one of them, photo merge panorama. So when I do a photo merge panorama, Oh, yeah, go ahead and do it with Smart Previews. That's fine. I was just telling me I'm missing the originals. Um, they're on a different drive, but that's okay. It'll do it from the um, Smart Previews that I built. And it's telling me, okay, this is what your panorama would look like. And normally at this point, I would say, oh, okay, I wasn't on a tripod. Not bad. It's okay. Go ahead and auto crop it so that I get to keep the good part. Well, now I don't have to auto crop anymore. I can, I can auto crop, which will give me the results. But I can also try the boundary warp, which will kind of warp it into the full space. So this is with the white space showing. This is just dragging boundary warp over as far as you want to go. And you can still auto crop, um, even if you drag it halfway. And get your resulting panorama based on um, the full, full size of the frame that it was going to create if it had all the great stuff to, to uh, work with there. So I just go ahead and told it to merge it, told it where to save it. And it should add it. There it is. It added it from the desktop, which is where I told it to save it. And that is my panorama scene that it can still be edited and still be worked on here in Lightroom Classic CC. So panoramas are big. They're a nice uh, ability to have uh, the ability to take multiple shots if you just your lens just isn't wide enough and get that nice panoramic feel for your travel photos. Now, here's another couple situations. I've shown this one before. We've all been in this situation where you're in a nice, you know, you want to show off your room. You're in a nice hotel room and you want to show outside on the patio and the patio is all blown out because it's all bright out there. But if you expose for the outside, then it's all dark inside and you're like, why is my camera doing this? My eye can see the outside and the inside at the same time. Why can't my camera? Because your eye is a million times better than your camera's sensor. You're, believe it or not, it's one of the things that like you expect technology to be beyond what we can see, but it's, it's in this case, it's not. You have more dynamic range in your vision than your camera has. So um, what do we do? We take... Uh, let's see, we take these two photos. I don't know, uh, this looks like I'm missing those two. Let's see if we'll, it'll work. Uh, we'll go to um, Photo Merge, 
HDR. Yep, go ahead and proceed. It's just telling me I was missing the originals, but it will use the smart previews. And voila, it will generate a preview of the scene showing both the outside and the inside put together. Now, it will also, it, it applied the auto settings to it. So it kind of, you know, touched it up a little bit for me, gave me a starting point. If there was any movement, I could apply the de ghost. And I'm just going to go ahead and simply say, yep, merge those together. It's going to ask me where. The only reason it's asking me where is because those are smart previews. Normally it would just, ooh, no. Normally I was going to say it would just do it. Oh, that time it didn't just do it. All right, let's try it again. I do control shift H. Merge to HDR. Let's see if it'll do it. That time it did it. All right, so it merged HDR, gave me my final photo. And my final photo is not final, meaning it gave me the HDR. That doesn't mean everything else is right. So, for example, the, the window is leaning over. It's crooked a bit. So let's use our crop tool. And let's use the angle tool inside the crop to straighten it on whatever angle you want. So I'm thinking, I'm, I'm telling Lightroom that this door frame should be straight. And it straightens out the door, the rest of the picture based on that door frame. Then I can uh, turn off the crop and continue working. Now, if I thought it needed upright, I could even do use that. So for example, let's go to, um, let's go to effects, not effects, I'm sorry, transform. And let's go to guide it. And so now I could say that should be straight. And that should be straight. And it will give me a guided upright, which looks even better based on those. So guided upright is awesome um, when you want to fix perspective issues like this, even if it's not a skyscraper, even if it's not a tall building. Um, you've, Rose, you've got something just like this, something just like what? All right, so let's let's go in and let's continue working on this. So it used the um, the standard profile to begin with. Since it created a new raw file, I've got the original or I got the uh, Adobe Raw profiles to work with. So I could say this is a landscape, uh, or this should be vivid, and it will give me a better color intent to start with. Uh, I could say Adobe Color, which is going to be kind of flat. Um, Actually, I kind of like landscape. So I'm going to keep it on landscape. Now, a couple other problems that are going on. There's a lot of dehaze in this photo. So let's bring that, or a lot of haze in this photo. So use dehaze to bring it down a bit. And we're there. We're getting there. I can increase my contrast a bit more. Not that much. And we're there. All right, so now let's say that the outside, everything on the inside is still looking pretty good. The outside's still a little on the hazy side. So what I could do is grab an adjustment brush, set my adjustment brush to dehaze as a starting point, as a um, just a reset everything to zero, give me a little bit of dehaze. And then I can go outside, step outside, and start dehazing just this area of the photo. There we go. Not sure why it was dragging that around originally, but there we go. So I can make my outside look a little bit better, my window frame look a little bit better, my curtains at the top look a little bit better because they're all being blown out by that bright sun coming in the window. All right, so now that I've painted that area or you know, using the adjustment brush, I can then adjust how much dehaze that area gets. Not that much. How much exposure that area gets. Bring down the exposure just on that one area. So the adjustment brush allows you to non-destructively adjust part of your photo. Uh, if you miss spots, you're going to continue painting. It will continue adding uh, brush strokes to that same point that we originally set, that point right there. And that point right there, by the way, 
I can click on it without moving it. There we go, or highlight, hover over it without moving it. We'll also show you any areas you might have missed. So that's another good um, thing that we can point out with the pinpoint here is that it's good for uh, showing you where the area is that you paint it. And if you missed a spot, you'll be able to see it with that red overlay. So that is working with HDR, working with panoramas. Um, I've got one more example I think is pretty cool. Classic travel example. You're shooting from inside of a landscape, such as this, this cave or this, whatever this is, outside. And the outside is completely blown out because you're exposing for the cave. Or the outside looks great and the cave looks too dark. Another perfect example for an HDR. So I'm going to go ahead and select both of those. Um, Control H on Mac or PC will bring up the HDR. I previewed it very quickly because it's just two frames. Now, can you do more than two frames? Can you do three? Can you bracket four or five exposures? You can bracket for as many as you think you need. Um, two or more works. So I've got these two selected. I'm going to go ahead and merge those to a new HDR. And once it merges, it will create that new HDR. There it is for me to work with. So now, one thing I noticed right off the bat, even if I don't want to adjust anything else, I hate a crooked horizon line in my landscape or travel photos. So the whole scene looks like it's leaning a little bit to the left. So again, we'll just quickly um, fix that using the uh, angle tool. Yeah, you can try auto straighten. And auto straighten works or it doesn't. So it's one of those 50-50. You have no, it's, it's just a button, you click it, it'll either say it can or can't do it, or it'll say it can't do it if it can't, uh, or it just won't straighten it enough for you, and you can always go back to the angle tool, and you can tell it, no, 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 I want to straighten it based on that, and it will tilt it and straighten it the way you want, because sometimes it may guess on the wrong thing to straighten, or the thing that you weren't thinking of. So again, from here, you can go in, start with a profile, W landscape, look at how much it made those colors pop right off the bat. And from here I can go in and, cause it already did the auto tone. So I could just make my adjustments and say, no, no, no. Make it a little bit more contrasty. Give me a tad bit more dehaze or a tad bit of dehaze. And that looks pretty good as is. All right, so we go from there. So HDR, panoramas, and Lightroom Classic CC. All right, let's keep going. Um, here's another one. So I have a couple here. Here's a photo that I took with my, uh, one of my earlier drones. This was in my first trip to Iceland. I went over there with a drone, my older drone. I knew I was going to get a new one. So it was kind of like, oh, I'll take this one to Iceland. If something happens to it, I won't care because it's old and I was going to replace it anyway. So this is a Phantom 2. They, don't, they stopped making these many years ago. Um, and I've upgraded since then a couple times. But the Phantom 2... Um, has a very fisheye effect when you take shots with it. Uh, most of the phantoms have a fisheye effect. So same thing, I, you know, fisheye is, if that's what you want, looks good, but I kind of want to fix this photo. So same thing, I'm going to head over to my lens corrections, and you're going to click the enable, menu, enable profile corrections and nothing happens. Because it doesn't always detect, especially on older devices like this old Phantom 2. It didn't detect that that's what that photo came from. So no problem, because even though I turned it on, I can still go and choose what I think it should be. I think it should be a DJI and not an Inspire, but the Phantom uh, Vision FC 200 is the closest thing. And boom, it fixed it. So, and if I did, if it didn't fix it, I could still adjust it manually by dragging the distortion slider. All right, so now that took care of that, but we're back to our Crooked Horizon, which you know drives me crazy. So let's go ahead and go to our crop. Let's go to our angle tool. And again, we could try auto, but angle will let me do it exactly the way I think it should be straightened. And there we are. So now you've got a point to start from making any other adjustments you want to make. So this is, um, and here, let me just try an auto tone here. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I don't always agree with the auto tone. I mean, it, it gets me a good starting point, but then I always go tweak it 
So for example, it always takes the contrast down some, for some reason on landscapes. Uh, let's go in and I don't like the vibrance in this case, so I'm going to drop it down. I don't like the saturation in this case, I'm going to drop it down. The temperature of the photo, I'm just going to cool it off a bit because it's supposed to look cold, it's icy. And I'd love to bring out a little bit more detail in that sky. Let's pull the highlights down a bit more. And we can use graduated filter because here it's called a graduated filter, not the linear gradient. So <laughs> the graduated filter, and we'll go ahead and say that uh, we'll start off with highlights. I'll bring those highlights down even more for the sky. And we'll pull that down a bit. And now I can mess with the sky. So I can bring the highlights down some more. Not making a huge difference anymore. But I can also add a little bit of dehaze. And if I wanted to blue that sky up a little bit more, I can just drop the temperature of the sky. But just pull out a little bit more detail in that sky. All right. That should do it. Now I notice there's a halo around the bird there. Sometimes that's oops, sometimes that's caused by the other feature inside of, or corrected by the other feature inside of Lightroom um, lens profile corrections, remove chromatic aberration. So if I turn that on and it doesn't do anything, then most likely that halo, and it didn't do anything. So most likely that halo is coming from over-processing. So that's when you want to go back and look at your sliders and say, you know what, did I bring those highlights down a little too much? Did I add a little too much dehaze? Like those are the things you start to look at when you start to see those little faint halos around things that you may have drew, you may have pulled a slider uh, a little too far for comfort. So uh, whenever you start, just do a quick exam of your photos. You'll see it around the mountains. You'll see it around objects in the sky like the bird. If you start to see those halos and chromatic aberration didn't take care of it, pull the sliders back a little bit more because uh, it's just a sign of over-processing. All right, uh, here's another good one. Let's go ahead and take a look at this one. So this is you know, travel slash portrait shoot, um, fitness shoot actually, up on a big rock on a mountain here. And while the subject is posing great, it's the, the light that <laughs> a, this was a product shot also. But at this point, we don't need the light anymore. Uh, so we can take care of that. Not so easy in Lightroom. Matter of fact, I wouldn't even try in Lightroom. Uh, I would just Command E, which tells it to edit inside of Photoshop. And um, from here, zoom in on that light and we'll use our any selection so for example I'll use a lasso so what I'm going to do does not need to be perfect so let's do a quick lasso around it get the light stand the backpack that was also used as a weight on the light stand <laughs> All the way back up and around. All right, so now that I got it selected, now what? I do one of two things. I'd either patch it or content aware fill it. And I'll, in this case, patching might be a little harder because it need, that edge of the rock needs to still be there and kind of straight. But I don't know what content aware fill is going to do either. Either one, I can always try and undo. So I'll try this one with the content aware fill first. If I don't like it, then I'll try a patch. So delete or backspace will bring up the fill options and the first fill option is con or by default it's going to be content aware fill because you're, it says, hey, you must be trying to delete that. Let's see if we can remove it for you. Um, not too bad. All right. Yeah, <laughs> I'm happy. Content aware fill made a great, you know, did a great thing by removing that light stand with with barely noticeable anything that's missing or or distortion or anything wrong. So, yay for content aware fill. Again, if it hadn't worked, then I would probably just take the patch and oh here let's undo it. 
Let's see. Let's see if it worked. If, if I couldn't have done it that way, then the harder thing to do would be to grab the patch tool and move it over. But you got to keep it aligned. And this is where it gets all dicey because you, you, know, you got to keep it aligned with the top as well as the rocks. And you could try a patch. And then you got to fix this. Up there, everything looks pretty good. But this is where it gets funky. So then you'd have to do multiple patches to kind of restore that um, the edge of that cliff and put the cliff back in. And, you know, you'll get there. But it's going to take you multiple steps to do it with uh, patching as opposed to just giving Content Aware Fill a shot. So Content Aware Fill did a better job just by hitting... Now, if, if Delete doesn't work for you or if you're on a layer and it puts a hole in it, just go up to Edit and choose Fill. And choose Content Aware. Click OK. And let it do its thing. Now, the other thing you might have noticed when I did the Content Aware Fill, I did it by selecting a little bit outside the area because if you select it too tight then it may not do as good of a fill job. So you want to give it a little bit, a few pixels of a cushion around it, selecting some of the background uh, for your content aware fill as well. All right, so we'll save that. We'll close it. Uh, Lightroom should put it right next to the original. Oh, in, this, eh, oh, in that case it was, yeah, it put it right next to the original. So here's the PSD versus the original. Original, gone. Not too shabby. All right. Next up. Let's see, we're just about done here. I want to um, talk about something called a merger. And this happens when you take pictures of people and you're not careful and you're not looking what's behind the subject or sticking, like for example, uh, you take a picture of a person on a city street and when you get home, you look at the picture and there's a light pole sticking out of their head because they were standing in front of a light pole or a light pole is off in the distance. So, for example, when I look at this, uh, my, my friend Kathy and uh, her husband here, uh, he's, he's got this stem from the vegetable from the back, like a stem like that. But it looks like it's growing right out of his head. And these uh, water spots, these, these painted water spots are not helping this photo at all either. So those are the kinds of things that um, make this a candidate for removing distracting objects. Now, in this case, uh, let's see, do I have this one? Yeah, I don't have either one of these locally, so let's, let's do the next best thing. Let's export it out. So I don't, what I'm saying is I don't have the original with me, but Lightroom will still let me export from the Smart Preview. And I can even export... I, want to export this. I can even export a raw file. It'll be a low res raw file, but it'll be a raw file that I can export out. All right, close enough. All right, then I can open that up. And if I wanted to make some um, camera raw adjustments here, I could. Let's just go ahead and open it. And the same thing. We got a bunch of distracting elements that are just making your eye look all over the place. Like, what's that? What's that? Oh, that, that one looks like that vegetable doesn't look that good. Versus looking at just our subject. We want to look at, you want people to be, their eyes to be on what you want them to look at. So that means getting rid of the things you don't want them looking at. So for example, um, we could use the spot healing tool or the healing brush and we could heal out the things that we don't want people looking at. Just removing these distractions. We could also use the patch tool, use clone stamp. Now when it gets to this thing up here, zoom in a bit and we are gonna use patch. So switch to the patch tool. I'm using a Wacom Cintiq or Wacom tablet. So it makes making selections like that a lot easier. And then I can move this over and patch it out. Now, see how it kinda Left a little smudge there. That happens sometimes when using content aware fill on an edge. I'm sorry, when using um, patch on an edge and you're not using content aware fill. So let's undo. Uh, undo again. 
switch it to content aware switch it to content aware there we go and then pull it over to the same exact spot and it doesn't give you that smudge it gives you a much better content aware fill while we're at it then you start looking at other distractions like the little glare in his glasses and if it were over his eye or cutting into his eye it'd be a lot harder to deal with but since it's just on the space we can switch that back to normal and make a nice selection around that one distracting element and around that other distracting element and start to remove those little pieces of glare that otherwise would make you look at anything else other than the photo. Now she's got a mole right here. It's a personal thing. Ask your subject, hey, do you want your mole or not? If they say, yes, it's my mole, it's my identifier, leave it. If they say it's okay, get rid of it. Anything that would distract you from looking at them. All right, so there we are. Uh, and of course, if I save that now, I'm just gonna save it out to the desktop. But normally, if you have the original photo and you save it, like this one where I did it earlier, returns it back to Lightroom. So all the distracting elements, all the non-distracting elements gone. Or without the distracting elements, it should be there. All right, so that is how to improve your travel photos as how to make your travel photos look better how to make your travel photos less distracting Oops, i need to do that hang on sorry wrong key there we go how to make your um your photos look better without all those distracting elements so with that said Cheers, everybody. Take care. Thanks for watching, and we will catch you on the next one. By the way, speaking of the next one, and Rose, I'm glad that helped you. Monday, we're doing a special stream. It's going to be all the evangelists here. Let me pull it up on my screen so you guys can see it. Dun, 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 dun. Monday, here on the... Um, here on the Creative Cloud... YouTube channel, we will be doing a special stream at 1 p.m. Pacific time. I'm just trying to get the image up on the screen so you guys can see it. And I'm going to have my special guest, the other Creative Cloud Evangelist here at Adobe. So let me just jump back over to my computer. So join us. Um, let me scroll that up a little bit. There we go. Join us on Monday, uh, April 30th, 1 p.m. Pacific time, where the Wizards of Workflow, Jason Levine, myself, and Paul Tranny, will be here talking about photography, photo editing, graphic design, and video editing and design, uh, taking a complete travel project from start to finish. All the elements that we will work together with, and we'll all be remote. So for example, no, you know, no two of us will be in the same room. So if everything holds together, <laughs> this should be a pretty cool stream. And you guys uh, should be able to check it out. Even if you can't stay, watch it live, or if you're watching this on a replay, um, if you can't watch it live, be sure to tune in and catch the replay here at uh, youtube.com slash Adobe Creative Cloud. So now with that said, I wanna say thanks for watching and we will catch you on the next one. Bye everybody.